government is partially shut down, the president's position, well, the, 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 the position of the Speaker of the House is that she will not negotiate while the, while the government is shut down. President Trump asked her, if I open the government, will you then negotiate? And will giving me the wall be a part of the negotiation? But then our whole government, all governments operate on the basis of compromise. So President Trump said, okay, if I, if I, shut, if I start up the government, I stop the shutdown, and we start to negotiate, will the 5.7 billion that I want for the wall, is that what we're negotiating for? Will we negotiate over what I have to give you to get that? In so many words, that's what he said to her. And she said, no, you're not getting the wall, period. Well, but then that's unheard of. That's unheard of in the whole history of the United States. He's the president of the United States. That's what he wants to protect the country. That's what you say to him? That is not rational, it is insane. The president can call a national emergency and build a wall. A new, a new caravan has started, I think from Honduras. The first one isn't completely dispersed. They're in Mexico, causing problems trying to get here from Mexico, and now another caravan has started from Honduras. And he wants to build a wall, and you tell him, no, absolutely not. There isn't anything you can give me that we will build a wall. And she and all the Democrats voted for a wall, 25 million or billion dollars a few years ago. It's, it's just totally insane. As I said to a few people yesterday, the lunatics are running the asylum. So President Trump, I give him credit. He would rather not call a national emergency. Why? Because he wants the government to work. God has given us a blueprint for a government that will work. Government is warfare. Different factions fighting with each other with the intention of coming to a, a, a compromise that will benefit the nation. The problem is we have treasonous uh, people elected to office in our government. That's what the problem is. So I think he's doing everything he can to wake up the people. He wants the people, not so much that he wants the people on his side, he wants the people to know the truth because when the people know the truth, then they will make a right decision. That's why wherever you have tyranny, such as in communism and fascism and any other ism, they try to hide the truth from the people. See, so we have, we have elites today that are elected and unelected elites that are so, such megalomaniacs that they're telling themselves, maybe they believe it themselves, that the average person is just not smart enough to understand what's going on in the world today. So we shouldn't tell them anything, and we should run the, we, the elites, the elites who are very smart and educated, we should run the country. But that's not what God says. God says, you tell people the truth, you explain it to them, honestly, and they'll make the right choice. That's what the jury system is all about. It has very little to do with your education or your intelligence, assuming you're an average person. If it's explained to you on a level that you can understand, the people will know the difference between right and wrong. People in, in a nation where people serve God, people, the citizens of a nation that is, is spiritually governed by the Lord Jesus Christ will discern between right and wrong. That's what God says. That's what a democratic republic is about. So we have evil powers operating through evil people that are stealing, or, or they have stolen our very heritage. Rights that were given to us by God that they have no right to steal. So I, I didn't want to make this a long political statement today, but President Trump spoke to the nation last night and he put forth his, well, maybe I didn't finish explaining it. So, so this is the stalemate. The Speaker of the House says she will not negotiate until President Trump opens the government. 
President Trump went to the Speaker of the House and said, okay, if I open the government, will we negotiate, will, will we be able to find a reasonable deal whereby you will give me the wall and I will give you something that I didn't intend to give you, but it'll be a compromise. And she said, no, no wall. So President Trump said, well, then I'm not going to open the government because if I open the government, I have no leverage. You simply will not give me what I believe I need to defend the country so I won't open the government. That's the stalemate. It's not a godly stalemate, brethren. So Pre President Trump has now addressed the nation for the second time. He's trying to get to the people that are my control, or people that only listen to MSNBC or CNN, and just hear the lies that President Trump just arbitrarily closed the government. And of course, Speaker Pelosi didn't do anything wrong. I listened to one of the commentators from, I think it was CNN. Such prejudice, you know, such, such lies. Brother, the country can, we cannot, the country will not survive. But what's going on today, the country won't survive. So if President Trump calls a national emergency and puts up the wall, that will not help the citizens of this nation. And we will be destroyed. They've taken over the colleges, they've taken over the grade schools. The minds of whole generations have been polluted and corrupted. It's, it's pretty far gone now. I don't even see what kind of hope there is unless God intervenes because all of the young people coming up, their minds are corrupted. But you fight to the end no matter what and hope for the best. So, so President Trump calls a national emergency and puts up the wall that it doesn't help the people. Well, the people that hate him are going to hate him even more because he Trump will have trumped the system. I think I just have more and more respect for him every day. I think he's going to go down in history to be one of the greatest president, maybe not greater than George Washington, but one of the greatest presidents. He wants to get the people, there, there, are, there are people that are just, their minds are just corrupted, but there are people who are just deceived, who are ignorant. He wants to give them a chance to stand up for what's right and, and hopefully work through the system so that the nation's not destroyed, so that our republic is not destroyed, because we're going to wind up with a dictator. The direction that things are going in, we will wind up with a dictator. And he knows that. So he's way beyond, this wall issue was way beyond a wall. It's way beyond a power play between him and Nancy. It's literally, he's fighting for the salvation of the republic. Because you cannot have a republic with the kind of citizens that are being turned out today. We just can't. So um, he made his, his, he presented his proposal to the people. See, so it, it's already established that, he, that she will not accept any proposal unless he shuts down the government, which means there's no way he's getting the walls and he will have lost his leverage. So he made his proposal to the nation. He is exposing her to the nation. And not only is he exposing her to the nation, but he's such a fighter. He, 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 one can really learn from him. He keeps flipping the situation on his enemies. I've seen him do it so many times. He's now become the hero of DACA. He's now become the hero of the illegal immigrants. He's offered them, the package that he offered is so pro-illegal immigrant and she won't even hear it. So I, I don't usually listen to Fox News, but for some reason I had Fox News on this morning, however that happened. And I usually don't even listen to the news when I'm getting ready to come preach. They had a, a, a gentleman from some Spanish organization representing the DACA, and they asked him what he thought about the proposal. So he didn't want to fully go back on Nancy, you know, but he, he commended President Trump. He was very, very positive, and he said he was very grateful to President Trump for the offer. 
What did President Trump offer? Well, you all know what the situation is with DACA, okay? DACA, DACA, the DACA situation, and I can't tell you what the acronym stands for, but it has to do with, with uh, the people who, young people who are here because their, pe their, their parents were here illegally and brought them here. So they're here illegally. They were not born here. They were brought here by their parents. They're not citizens. They came here when they were very young by their parents illegally, so they're illegal citizens. They're, not, they're illegal non-citizens. And uh, President Obama could not, uh, they're trying to pass a bill to give them a path to citizenship. And that's a big issue in the country today. There are people waiting for years and spending thousands of dollars to come here legally. And these people just just force their way over the border and they, and, and the Democrats want to give them citizenship. So it's a big, major issue in the country. What do you do with the people? The people are already here. What do you do with them? And is this fair to the people that are coming in legally? It's a major crisis in the country. So Obama could not get the Congress to pass a law that would make them legal, so he just did it by executive order. And, and when President Trump came in, these people are here illegally because an executive order cannot give you citizenship. So when President Trump came in and the issue came to him, he said, this is not an issue to be done by executive order. This issue has to be dealt with by the Congress. This issue, there has to be a law passed. Either they're going to be given legal status or they have to leave. It's not up to the president. And he's right. He said Congress has to pass a law dealing with these young people. And Congress didn't pass a law. They couldn't pass a law. Because what? They're fighting with each other, the Democrats and the Republicans. But fighting is the way the Republic works, except that at some point you have to find a solution for the good of the country. So it's not pre President Trump hasn't done anything wrong. The Congress has to find a solution. And if you can't find a solution today, then you wait a couple of years and you go to the voting booth and you vote in senators and congressmen that are going to agree with your position. That's the way our government works. Then you try to negotiate again now that you have new congressmen and new senators. Depending on the will of the people as to who's elected, you find the solution for them.